Today we try something completely different. We're going to use the amazing Coach's Voice website to try and break down and replicate Rangers' performance against Celtic. How's it going everyone? Hope you're well. So what is Coach's Voice website? Let me take you straight over there now. It is amazing. Get over there, follow them on Twitter and then follow the links to the various things they've got going on. Let's have a look. So this is the Coach's Voice website and there's loads on here as you can see. It breaks down all these different tactics and formations over here. You've got Karanka showing his high full backs. There's absolutely loads on there. And what they'll do is when it's been a big match they'll break it down. They'll break it down on Twitter on a thread that you can see here. Just like this one here, the thread there for Rangers v Celtic, and that's the one we're going to use today to try and replicate the way Rangers set up. Let's get to it. Okay, so first up, the teams and match stats. So you can see the team down there. We're going to use that exact team for our recreation here. And you can see the match stats. It kind of shows the way Rangers played. Match stats, shots. They got more shots away in the Celtic using counter-attacking. Check out the possession of 36% to 64. Celtic had more in the area. XG was in Rangers' favour, so they had the better chances using the counter-attack system. Now, the boys at Coach's Voice had Rangers in a 4-3-3, but not your normal 4-3-3. So our FM21 4-3-3 will look something like that, where you've got four at the back, three midfield, two wide, one up top. But if we look a bit closer on the Coach's Voice definition and explanation of the way Rangers played, it's going to be a lot different to the way this one looks. So eyes on the definition over there. So in the absence of Steven Gerrard, Rangers were set up in a 4-3-3. Designed to counter-attack with direct vertical passing. Played quickly into a narrow front three of Kent, Kim Roof and Alfredo Morelos. While they attacked through the inside channel, support are wider than provided by advanced centre midfielders Aribo and Glenn Kamara. Right, let's replicate that top bit first. So, set up in a 4-3-3, designed to counter-attack with direct vertical passing. So, in possession, we're going direct vertical, which means through the middle more. So, let's focus play through the middle. Front three of Kent, Roof and Morelos. Right, let's get them boys in. So, these three, we're going to change the actual positions of them in a minute. But we'll put Kent, Alfredo and Roof into these positions. There we go, Morelos, Kent, Roof. Now, they're going to change positions right now so we've got the passing style and the tempo sorted and the free up front but it does say there that they played in a narrow front three attacking through the inside channels and support out wide is provided by two centre midfielders so we have two options for these front three we can either go flat front three up there so they're going to be narrow like that or we can drop Kent and Roof in there so you've still got your narrow front three workingly at the minute we'll keep it like this for now but let's get back to coach's voice importantly for the midfield positions here when the attack for the inside channel support out wide was provided by Aribo and Glenn Kamara so their roles to me are pretty simple for FM players let's get on it okay so there's Aribo and Kamara into the team remember these are the boys that we're going to provide most of the width out here because we're doing a narrow front three so it's that beautiful role of the Mazala both of them double Mazala because these boys Rebo is going to go in there into them pockets Glenn Kamara into there or vice versa if they change positions on the pitch so we've got Mazala's now rocking with a front three narrow moving on to the left back position now Borna Barisic moved forward from left back especially well so he's going to be the more advanced got him down as a wing back attack there no Barisic he's more of a complete wing back he's got a lot of work to do so Barisic comes in there because he's going to do the lion's share of the work up and down there. Well, let's just nudge him into a complete wing back on support because it's still a counter attacking system, so he doesn't want to be caught up there all the time. Barisic comes in there as a complete wing back. So the front three rolls we need to nail down really. So if you look there, attacking player progressing either from passes in behind, so we're going to have one running in behind, or into feet when they look to hold off Celtic centre backs. Okay. So we're wanting balls in behind and to feet as well. Now Ryan Kent, pacey player in this role. He's going to have to be a shadow striker, I think. He's going to be one getting in behind. Into feet, Kim Roof can do that job in there. Let's have a look at attacking midfielder on attack and play with his instructions. We'll get Kim Roof holding up the ball, taking a few more risks when he gets it. In behind, Alfredo Morelos is going to do a bit of a job as an advance forward, drifting wide and getting in behind as well. 
it's starting to take shape now. It's not the definitive. We're not completely there. We might still tweak it, but it's starting to take shape. Now, next paragraph down, we can see that Rangers centre-backs look for direct passes beyond Celtic's back line. Okay, so the two centre-backs, if they're capable, they're going to be a ball-playing defender. If they're not capable, it's going to be a no-nonsense centre-back. They're just going to hit it over the top. So rather than play it out patiently, it's more direct balls. So a ball-playing defender will be Connor Goldson because you can see from his attributes there, he can handle that role. He's got good passing, good vision, a decent first touch. Next to him, it won't be Leon Balagun. It will be... Helander. Now, Helander is not a ball-playing defender. You can see his passing is decent, but his vision's not great and his first touch is not great either, so he'll get the no-nonsense centre-back role. So his clearances will be going over the top. Full-backs also look to play direct forward passes, but these were mostly inside, into the narrow in roof and Morales. So, Barisic and the right-back, they're looking to play underlap balls in field right. So the way the coach's voice have now picked it up, it seems more like that roof was a little bit higher up up into that area and Morales there both of them pinning onto the fullback so staying a bit wider both Roof as well staying a bit wider Roof will be a deep line forward because he's got the capability to hold the ball up which means Ryan Kent will be a shadow striker and roaming around a bit so he's got a bit more freedom it sounds like also this they noticed that the fullbacks were playing balls in there like that so what we're looking for here is underlaps left and right to try and capitalize in these areas Getting into the nitty gritty now. So, although the host front three change positions regularly, so we might have a bit of rotation between these three. We might look at switching positions, maybe. They lacked a drop in central player to connect with direct runs on the outside of Celtic's centre back. So, this player, Kent, is probably in the right position then, because as it goes on, Rangers penetrating the final third much more frequently and carried a much stronger attacking threat when they had this lad there. With Roof and Morales holding their positions near the select fullbacks. That looks like the front three we're going to go with, creating space for midfield runners, which is your Kamara and your Aribo. Okay, Barisic continued to push forward from left back. Good. So he's pushing forward on support. And Leon Balogun, more conservative on the right. So Leon Balogun's going to come in here. So let's pick him in because Tavernier wasn't available. More conservative, so just a fullback support on that side. So a player that wasn't mentioned much was Stephen Davis, but I know he intercepted a few balls. He's going to be a deep line playmaker on defend duties. He's going to hold his position in there, allowing Aribo and Kamara to get a bit further forward. So you can see there from that picture, we've pretty much got the front three right. You've got Morelos there, just like he's over there. And you've got Roof there, slightly deeper. And then you've got Ryan Kent trying to get in that gap in between them. And Stephen Davis has got the ball there. So I think that's a layout that we're going to go with. It looks decent. Now, the only thing we need to worry about now is our style of play. Counter, counter press, defensive line, things like that. Eventually, the host took the lead through centre-back. Philip Highlander, superb header from a deep Balasic corner. So, instantly, let's play four set pieces and capitalise on those. What else have we got? The introduction of John Lundstrom for Roof on the right side of midfield led the host adopting more of a mid to low block and reducing the intensity of their press. So, they went back to a mid to low block. So, at the start... They were a bit higher up, pressing more extreme. So later on they revert to this, but from the start it sounds like they're a bit more aggressive, bit of a higher line each way, and extremely urgent pressing, probably preventing short key, goalkeeper distribution as well. So that's the way they started. So I think we're pretty much there. It sounds like near the end of the game they reverted to like a 4-5-1, just trying to hold on to that lead. So we'll create that one as well, and we'll see how the two shape up. Okay, after a little bit more tweaking, this is what we've come up with as a replication. The roof position is the interesting one. I'm going to start in there. If it's not looking like it's working in match, roof then goes up to there as a deep line forward. But if you notice, when you click on roof, he has got the hold up ball and stay wider. So he is effectively holding the ball there and nudging out wide. We'll see how it goes. Okay, six games gone. You can see it's gone pretty well. They've only conceded one goal, a couple of draws. But we are using this tactic. The only tweak I've done to it is I've changed the mentality to attacking. So they're going to be a bit more front-footed. But we are going to keep this going and we're going to use it against Celtic. But the only difference we're going to use against Celtic is the mentality will be a bit more balanced, a bit more controlled. Schedule-wise, here it is. Took a while to get used to it in the friendlies, but since then it's gone really well. So we've got about one, two, three, four, five games before that game against Celtic and then we'll judge it. We have finally arrived at the Celtic game, so let's get the same team 
as they had at the weekend. Just like that. So that's the team we're going with. We'll keep an eye on Roof because we might move him up to there if need be. We'll also might do this where if we feel like we're getting too exposed and the counter press isn't working, you simply drop it into a regroup, especially if you take the lead. And we might also, if we do take the lead, drop into the 4-5-1 like they did at the weekend. Let's see. So the plan is to try and get in front and then revert to the 4-5-1 like Rangers did at the weekend. Started okay, here's a rebo just over. It's a long shot because we are away to Celtic, so it's a bit tougher, but we'll see. Stats are pretty similar to the weekends, aren't they? Possession wise, 37% for Rangers. That's all we've got. 22 minutes gone. Okay so far. Right, we've made it to half time, but Celtic came on strong there, so we might have to do a couple of tweaks. I'm contemplating going earlier to that 4 5 1. If we get to an hour and it's still a draw, we'll revert to the 4 5 1 like Rangers did at the weekend. Okay, 75 minutes gone. You can see the stats. We're doing okay, we're in it, but I'm going to revert to that 4 5 1 that Rangers did at the weekend. Okay, so that's how we're going to try and see this match out now. With the 4-5-1, take a draw away at Celtic, damn right. Five minutes to go, Celtic in the corner, is Aja, crosses Taylor, big save, just clinging on. 20 seconds to go, we are attacking, Is Steve Davis. Barisic, back to Davis, back to Barisic. Joe Rebo, Kent, Rebo, it's nice, Morales. <laughs> Get in. Oh my days, the 4-5-1 on the counter has done the business. Davis to Arebo, Ryan Kent lays it through. Morelos, the man everyone loves to hit, pigs it in and we might just have got a dream result. Job done, using those two formations from the coach's voice, how they saw Rangers play at the weekend. We managed to get a win. We're up against it, but we got the win. There are the results we've had with the formation. All of those results, other than the last one, were with a 4 Three three narrow the last one as you saw four three three and then a four five one just to see it through and we ended up nicking the result so great result as a reminder there is the tactic that got us the main results the one we started against Celtic and then we flipped it to that one both of these will be available to download if you want to give it a go the only change I would make against bigger teams like I did against Celtic halfway through flip that to, to regroup instead of counter press and drop your defensive line to standard try and hit them on the break a bit more other than that it's all good to go hope you enjoyed that coach's voice thank you again i may do some more of these if you enjoyed them it's a great resource thanks for watching